There is a ruggedness, a rawness of the earth all around that calls to you, humbles you. Knowing the birth of man was this ground, you catch the gaze of a lioness and your breath is halted in your lungs. To feel the freedom an impala must feel when away she swiftly runs. To lose yourself in Africa is to finally find a place that unapologetically calls to your soul to be truly wild. Journey with me, Africa. As we continue our journey in South Africa, we decided to leave the charming city of Cape Town and fly to the greater Kruger region to the Manialeti Game Reserve for a once in a lifetime safari experience. There was definitely some anticipation for this leg of the trip. One, because we had been completely responsible for creating this itinerary for booking our flights. You can imagine our wonder as we flew over the National Reserve and saw animals from the plane windows. It was so, so cool. And it just gave us a first little glimpse to our safari experience. Welcome to Big Family. <laughs> And what was really awesome is as we were driving to the resort, we saw elephants. Oh my god, you're loser. How are you today? Thank you for, you know. Thank you for your presence. Giraffes, monkeys, impalas. Like, it was so cool because we hadn't even started the safari, but it already felt like we had. So the place that we're staying at, it's called the Koka Moya Honey Guide Camp. This is the view and then this is the tent. Me and Lizzie are here. <laughs> and she's very cold, it's cold here. And this is the bathroom. I was the one that actually picked the resort where we would stay and the reason that I picked this is because I wanted to have a kind of glamping experience I suppose you could say because this is a tented safari camp and I was thinking to myself if we're gonna go to the African bush and do a safari why not experience staying in a tent to have just the full immersion of staying in the African bush and when we arrived it's not a very big resort which I actually prefer um, but you could see all of the tented rooms and what also took us unexpectedly was the temperature that we were greeted with. But it's very cold. <laughs> Alam nyo? We packed only summer dresses and it's not loving. So we actually arrived around 2 p.m. We're in South Africa near the Kruger National Park and we're staying at Koka. Guide. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hey. Bumbans. <laughs> <laughs> we had lunch and it was really cool. Their lunch area is this open seating and in the trees around the, um, the open area of the food hall, um, there were even monkeys in the trees and we'd be in a moving vehicle, which I know is something that um, Jolo, Erickson and Liz did not expect to be an open vehicle, just the same as I didn't expect on my first safari. Beautiful, 
So the thing is with a game drive, there is an element of luck in it. It's not guaranteed that you're going to see any animals, let alone the big five on a game drive. It's really if your ranger is able to have a personal sighting or if they're able to communicate with other rangers through a walkie talkie um, and then go to the place where there's been other sightings by other people. It just so happened we were just driving along and then Erickson all of a sudden has this reaction out of nowhere and he's like lions and he sounded really scared and we thought he was joking but then he points right beside him like right beside him and there are three lions lying in the grass It was incredible. We were so close to them and they were just lounging and playing with each other. And the ranger explained that during the day, they're, they're in a relaxed mood because um, they usually hunt during the night. So during the day, they're quite sleepy, um, calm, playful with each other. And we just watched on as these three male lions just rolled in the grass and petted each other. And it was just an incredible first sighting of the day. After that, we drove for a while and we came across three elephants, which was really amazing. There's just something so majestic about elephants. Um, they're incredibly powerful, but also they have this stoicness about them, which I think is really interesting. And then we drove a little bit more and as the sun started to go down we spotted some lionesses in the grass which is really amazing to see but also instills in you a little bit of nervousness because you just know that at nighttime is when they're hunting and when they're more alert so there's almost like this primal sense that awakens in you as you watch them like you know how wild they are and you know that there's danger and I think that's just the thrill also of having a game drive. Hey, my friend, I swear I said Day two, we awoke really early to the sound of banging drums, as is tradition here in the camp. Um, we had a quick small breakfast with coffee and tea. It was cold and we couldn't believe it. We had layered all of the pants, jackets that we possibly could, that we brought. This that's Makamema. What do you want to see? I want to see a rhino and the leopard. And day two of safari, we saw some giraffes. We also saw other types of wildlife, um, impalas, beautiful colored birds. And then we saw my most favorite sighting of the whole safari experience. We saw a leopard and her cub. We are so lucky because they are quite notoriously difficult to track and to find. She was just so elegant, but also just had this sense of danger around her. And I couldn't just help but just stare at her. I took so many photos. We were all just mesmerized as we watched her um, and her cub. What's so funny too, when you're on these game drives, you don't want to speak. It's my 
also because you're not supposed to just to not scare off the animals um but you just want to whisper because again you feel and you are a guest in their environment you are not necessarily welcome there and it's it's electric it really just makes you feel on edge we're able to see a rhinoceros this particular rhinoceros had had its horn removed and this is to discourage poachers from killing them for their horns our rangers really ensure that we're educated about you know learning about them the challenges that they face in protecting these animals so those of you who don't know the big five is rhino other beast elephant lion and leopard but those are the big five if you've seen the big five you're considered to be like complete in your safari experience so Pakita huh? mo yung tent mo Huh? Pakita mo yung tent Ay, this are? Yeah Really? Yeah Not bad? No Oh, well, let's go Ay, sir Sir <laughs> <laughs> Again. And what's really interesting about the Kokamoya camp, which is what this camp is called, is that there's absolutely no fences separating it from the national park. So, ibig sabihin, anything, elephants, lions, you name it, can walk in and out of the campgrounds, which is why we've been told we're not allowed to walk around at night under any, any... Without guide. Without any guide. Under any circumstance, you're not allowed to walk around at night. And at daytime, you have to really keep your eyes open and to be alert. That's my tent over there. Blanky! How is your massage? Mo? Super good! Why doesn't it open? Just slide it. It's why oh. not it? <laughs> oh. Bye! Day three, our last day, we started the day with a sighting of African wild dogs. Just after a hunt, and it was crazy because we drove through the bush, um, chasing them in a way. I don't know what we were doing, to be honest. The driver was just doing his thing and impactful scene because there were the wild dogs um, having their breakfast and then there was hyenas lurking birds coming in and you, it just makes you really respect the circle of life that really exists in the wild when we headed back to camp for breakfast after the first game drive which is around about 8 or 9 a.m we were greeted with the sweetest surprise, I think, and also just a highlight, a super, super highlight of the whole safari. Eighteen elephants were just walking through our camp to drink from the water hole, and it was incredible because it's almost like the safari came to us. It was so near, and we were just beside ourselves. Okay, so this is where we have breakfast. We were so giddy, we were video calling, I called my mom. We were calling people back in the Philippines just to video call them and show them. Like It was so incredible and just like the best way to end our safari trip. Oh, I do, I do, I do, I love you. Oh, I do, I do, I do, I love you. With all And just like that, our safari experience came to an end. I think it was a really humbling experience because, you know, well, personally, I feel like with the pandemic being stuck at home for the majority of time, um, there's something in my soul that longs to be out in the wilderness and to have this experience in South Africa, to be able to see these majestic, terrifying 
amazing animals with my own two eyes and, and to really witness the circle of life and, and to just witness and be a part of something. I think there's something in all of ourselves that longs to be free and longs to be wild. So thank you, South Africa, for giving that gift to us. I can't wait to be back until the next journey. <laughs>